What is this nonsense? It loves to give me this bug. What is this nonsense? The client doesn't match. Yes, it does. Ha ha ha! Literally, yes, it does. Wait, is it literally not matching? Oh no. One of the glitches is this. I'm literally not matching. The new patch is not in. What in the glitch is this? Quick game. Let's try this again. What in the weird Steam glitch is this? It generally resolves with second login. There we go. That is so weird. I, that's why I record that stuff. Yeah, if you guys see that and you're linked through whatever the phone app is that you use and your main account I'm and, and to Steam, I'm assuming that happens. I appear to still have game data, though, because it knows I'm 34th and it's taking me back, which is what it does at, at the start of every new season and is the eternal season, which I've actually not seen that move in. Quite possibly most have indeed there, but <laughs> at some point I do plan on seeing it. And I do think the actors are super cool in it, or at least they're veteran actors, which that's super awesome to see them doing stuff again. And let's just see what we can do here. Will it be worth it? This is all gonna ride on the Conquest card. Is it a mutant or X Men related? Let's see. Yes, I have 295 medals. There's nothing that she could spend that on. It will convert into hopefully this will be an next gene. Sage of Beyond. Convert it into Warpath. That's an next gene, and I'll take it. One I hardly use. Whoa, here's the new awesome art. Yeah, this character here is the one that apparently creates the Eternals. Um, I have in the description down below the uh, new monthly pass on it. This character is the 7 7 card that's going to completely change the game entirely. I'm actually a bit curious to get a hold of them. They grant you 12 random cards, which you can apparently play with Thanos to make like a 20-some card deck. Which how Thanos adds some many new stuff, I don't know. But there's a new balance change, so maybe uh, that will make sense of it. But we'll check out the balance change next. Heck yeah. And here's, here's Gilgamesh. I do know his name, because I believe he's the one in the battle pass. Everyone else, no. <laughs> also, Gilgamesh is easy for me to remember because of the awesome, I believe, Sumerian tale. Also, it's in Star Trek. That the tale is totally Star Trek, anyway. Let's see. Werewolf by Night for $100. This is horribly inefficient to the gold you're getting. This is on two spotlight catches. is not worth this much money, in my opinion. It is a huge time saver, though. So if you're one of those players that likes to trade time for... Uh, character unlock opportunity. That is there for you, although I greatly, greatly advise it, but it is your money. You can do what you want, but yeah, I'm free to play in this game. Right. Well, there's a new beast with Storm flying over. Alex Ross edition. And Jean Grey going absolutely psychic. Oh my goodness, there's Prof X as well. Uh, this is probably Gambit holding his bow staff. And there's Archangel. Wow, there's X-Men Archangel here in this art. That is so cool. It's actually good guy Archangel. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Oh, here's the new music. Oh, I'm loving it. This is a screenshotter, actually. It's incredible art. There's a new Baby Hulk by Scotty Young. And a new album. Ooh. A new album just came out, apparently, too. Baby Human Torch. Yeah, there's a Scotty Young Baby album, I bet. Kim Jacinto. This is the dev pick. Well, that's pretty dang cool. I have a few. Can you just indulge your freezy? The beast avatar is out too. Oh, that's tempting. I think I have a beast avatar already. Oh, Thena! Here's the... Thena's really freaking cool looking. Eduardo Mello, Ryan Kennard. After each turn, plus three power if you played exactly two cards. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna be that good. <laughs> that seems pretty awful to me, but they're probably trying to make those uh, one cost decks better, which they're pretty good with Kyera. Which I do have Kyera, finally. Oh my goodness! There's new Series 3 cards! I can get Mortar for free! Oh, I need to see who else is in here! Oh, snap! That's, this is amazing! This is a joyous time! They used to do this every month when the game 
was like just a little old, I think. I think it was still within the first year. And then they just got greedy, which there's no other word to use, really. Um, I'm blaming corporate, not really the game makers on that one. Uh, but yeah, they're making it right, though. They're trying to make it right. So let's give them a tip of the hat for that. But they're baby-stepping the game back to its form of glory, which, yeah, that's why the power creep is so out of control right now in the game, because they removed the free-to-play way to get these cards quicker. Uh, and yeah, and if you see these again in a spot like Hedge, you can then get their custom outfits if you wanted to. It's really cool. And it's kind of more than an outfit, because yeah, it totally changes their look and whatnot. And sometimes they're... I think it... Does it ever change the voiceover? Let me know in the comment section down below. Does a variant ever change the voiceover? I want to say maybe it did for a few, but I might be thinking more of Marvel Heroes. I don't know. Anyway, let's keep get, keep it going here. <laughs> Uh, I just felt like saying that. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, the Celestial's Finest. June 2024, Season Pass. Here's Gilgamesh. Old Blade. Old Blade's one of my favorite characters. Blade is so cool. Here's Py what appears to be Pirate Gamora. Gamora is so powerful, too. And here's this dude, who's apparently the creator of the Eternals. Don't make the battlefield. The mighty Gilgamesh. Now, now in the new premium Season Pass. Let's check it out. Here it is, Gilgamesh. On reveal, plus one power for each of your other cards in play with increased power. Gilgamesh is wild. Although, here's the thing. Why would you play this card? Also, shout out to Francesco Tomaselli. Hopefully I said that right. Francesco Tomaselli. It sounds Italian to me. It could be wrong, though. I do apologize for that. Accent was absolutely awful, too. <laughs> but let's keep going here. On reveal, plus one power for each of your other cards in play with increased power. Because you can get this with Blue Marvel that will just always give them plus one. Why would you need to do that? Now, it will stack with Blue Marvel, undoubtedly. But that's the cool part of this game. You don't really have to worry about, like... If something stacks or doesn't stack, it always will stack if, if they meet the applying. And then he's on reveal. He's on reveal. So he can be buffed by Wong. Is that the difference? Let's go look at Blue Marvel. Because because then I can make an initial guess if he'll be good or not. There's the new album. We'll look at that. Play more towards the end. But this is just hugely game shaking. Because Blue Marvel has been destroying me. What, how did I bump something weird? Can you take me back, please? Ongoing. He is ongoing. That's what I thought. That's the point of Gilgamesh. Also, he's stronger. Why is he stronger? Uh, Gilgamesh seems like a good card right now. He's a 5-7 that can be buffed with my the awesome Wong play, which is tons of fun. Gilgamesh seems like a beast. Well, he's probably going to be demolishing me. Although, you'll, probably, you'll hopefully still see more gameplay of this coming out, even if I don't play in the month, just to get the prior month up, because that was so insanely awesome. Um, and tons of mutant goodness. But I do want to get Blink here. Did I not get Blink popping up in my store yet? Ah, no, I got uh, Nebula's here, who I want so bad, but surely at some point they'll drop her down to Series 3, right? It was just unfortunate I didn't get her one of the times. I got every other card around her. It was just one of those things I just could not bring myself to keep playing the game. Mortar. I really like this card. I have a deck for that card already. I might have a way to increase it, too. Uh, she works great with Sa um, probably with Sage, I would assume. But probably more so with Captain Marvel and an awesome Dazzle deck. Let's see what else can be done here. Dude, I'm just enjoying this picture. It's really awesome. Athena looks great. I'm, lear I'm learning their names slowly. Let's just hop into Conquest. Drum roll. Drum roll. Will it give me what I want? Will it be a mutant? It's a Mysterio. 
from Adia. Very cool, but I really like the Mysteri Mysterio I already have. Is there some incredible title? Immortal till proven otherwise. That's too, too arrogant for my play style. But yeah, this looks like it. Let's just check out this game mode. Give it one last chance to redeem. Judging you like a host planet. <laughs> that sounds eternally themed, from what I've heard. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, this guy might be some people's new favorite card. So if you guys really want that, that might be it. Because this guy's going to totally change the game and maybe even give you cards. Uh, he can probably give you cards you don't have. He's giving you 12 random. He sounds like so much fun to play. He sounds like um, Mr. Mixie from DC Duel Force that would randomize your deck after you played him. Oh, here's Modok. Oh, I need Modok so bad to hit the next level. And Grandmaster would be so awesome with all my mutants to have. Like, these are great other cards. And here's Athena. Athena herself sounds a little weak. But look at this art. I could blame anyone for wanting this. It's the friend. Francesco. Francesco. Tomaselli. Oh, that means... Oh, that means the win... Oh, the streak of the other... The other person's done. They had, like, the last three cards in a row. It was their art. Look at this sword and axe. This is one of my favorite arts in the game now. That is so cool. Dude, Thena looks epic. Thena looks absolutely epic. This Grandmaster looks awesome, too. Ryan Benjamin and Elmer Santos. Or Santos. Uh, wow. Luca Claretti? Oh, this is, I have some Luca Claretti art. For free, of course. Wait, what? Shouldn't this be gold? Shouldn't this be gold? What the heck? Uh, sometimes they have bugs in this the first day it comes out. Maybe they realized it was always the same, so it didn't need to be gold? Because it was the same as this one? Is that true? Let me know. This definitely used to be gold. The question is, was it always the same reward? So it's justified to make it the same color now. Yeah, let me know that in the comment section down below what your guys' thoughts are on that. Obviously, I need the credits, so there's always value to playing this game, but... Do I? I think I need one more catch. I do, I need one more catch to guarantee another mutant. But yeah, I'm probably going to take a bit of a break on this one, because... Because multiverses need so much time. That game that unlocks stuff. And that's freaking... Uh, the free battle pass that he gave to new players, so... I would like to try that out. And also, I'm trying to unlock um, Mr. Smith from The Matrix. In multiverses, which that's just what other game... Will that even let you play as that character? But yeah, it's going to be a lot to try to get. Anyway, that's just where I'm going in my life. If you guys just really love this game... Look at this, there's lots of awesome art to collect. And really awesome game mechanics with this character. I'm very tempted to get a hold of that character. I might play a little a little bit into this one. Let's just look at the battle pass now. We go put a little Gilgamesh. Oh, here's a new emote. That's cool. Here's Gamora. You're standing on Tiamat. Merging any day now. There's a cool picture. They do sell the free variant. And the free background is Arishem. That's his name. Arimusim. Arishem? I don't know how to say it. I haven't seen the show. If he's even shown in the movie. I assume he would be at the beginning. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't really need a background of, background of this one character I won't have for, like, forever. It's really cool art, though. Yeah, there's just nothing mutiny in this one. As in mutants. X-Men mutants. X-Genes. Yeah, I think that's a pass for me. Let's read the actual... Here are the patch notes. The patch notes will be their own video. 
think this is the video that I've seen already. The de developer notes. I guess we could click that out. And show it to you guys real quick. Yeah, here it is. I'll have this in, in the description down below. Yeah, here it is. The, the new video. And here's a little sneak peek of the gameplay that's coming up. For June the 4th here, which is essentially the second Star Wars day from May 4th. I was busy May 4th playing oh, the Lego game and whatnot, and I think finishing up Snap. Playing Lego Fortnite, I should say. But yeah, Lego Fortnite's been put on back burner to uh, back burner, excuse me, for uh, what is that? Multiverses. So I was very limited to sleep yesterday. There's a uh, sister's 14th anniversary going, so I was going, watching their live streams the wee, wee hours in the morning. So it's a fun though. They ba she basically held, um, Yeldon the leader basically held a free concert. <laughs> Just live, just sort of sitting and singing in her house, it looked like. Okay, let's go to this. This is the real the real thing everyone wants to see, probably. New season, the Celeste Rules Finest. This is the patch notes of the new patch, which today I'm just going to blend into everything because I am uploading a heck ton of multiverses gameplay. And yeah, I'm probably flooding you guys' inboxes enough, but it is what it is. I'd rather get the content out to peeps. Although it's already d days behind, but I'm doing my best to get it out. Because, yeah, it's a lot of time to play, so it just lowers the amount of thumbnails I can make to get the actual videos out. June 3rd, 2024. Let the will of the Celestials be done, little galaxy emote. We welcome you to the newest season of Marvel Snap, where we honor the might and majesty of the Eternals. These ancient beings were bestowed with unfathomable powers by the Celestials and have been tasked with protecting the Earth in a hidden war against sinister deviants. The Eternals have watched over humanity for millennia, influencing myths and legends across cultures. Now, they have emerged from the shadows. Prepare to meet and harness the power of the Essentials' finest. That's very interesting because DC has had... Also, I apologize for DC um, references and Warner Brother ones if you guys really are offended by that. If you're just super, like, Disney Marvel fans or whatever, just super Marvel fans. But yeah, but storytelling-wise, I'm going to mention the, the reference here. Because this is interesting, because Supergirl had that, a story arc like this in CW. And they were essentially doing that stuff, but there were definitely villains in that. I feel like there's supposed to be heroes in this one, but I haven't actually seen the product to really know. So they didn't exactly say it here, but they look like hero art to me. Anyway, new character, Gilgamesh. Is this supposed to be THE Gilgamesh from Sumar? The Sumerian culture? Huh. On reveal, plus one for each of your other cards in play with increased power. Yeah, Gi is that the Is that in Gilgamesh where the, the Flood story is? Almost identical to the Bibles one? I think that's in Gilgamesh. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but he's probably a different character just named the same thing. But he, if he really is supposed to be the Gilgamesh, which already, yeah, that's not what they're. Uh, what do I say that? Their creed of the people are? Yeah, I don't know how to actually politically say that right, but anyway. I think it looks really cool art. I really li like that. I like the flair that it's bringing in his ancestry. Let's keep going. Although I don't know a whole lot about Eternals at all. But just as an art perspective, I really like the whole look of that character. I think he's really awesome, and it's going to be so fun to play Wong, who's going to look awesome beside him, you buffing up his power into, like, a surfer deck. Because th that's what my surfer deck is missing, actually, is this exact character. Because I have, like... No, I think that's worth showing. I think it's absolutely worth showing because this is this is the deck you should be used in, and we're gonna deep, we're gonna go a little deep dive in this one. Just a tad bit of a deep rail. <laughs> Just so oh, this is like an alternative path that we're taking, but we're gonna go back to the main track in a second here. 
let's see. Yeah, right the wave. Isn't that my surfer deck? It is. I clicked it already. Yeah, see, I have Legion in here. I just threw in random Legion. Oh, I forgot I totally changed this deck. I added Scarlet Witch as well. That's right. See, this deck was so underperforming, I completely transformed it. Although it's still a great deck. Like, the surfer play, if hits ideal turn, is just crazy powerful. But most people, people will retreat out of it before you ever can do it. Because I need that no retreat leak, how I actually play. But anyway... But yeah, see, like, I had five sevens, because I've had this in an alternative build with, um, Thor, and Jane Foster, and then I took Thor out for Sebastian Shaw, and Jane Foster was just there for raw power, not really doing a whole lot, but now you could throw Gilgamesh in here, and you can just buff all this stuff up. This could also be Nico Minoru, to do a little early game buff to try to duplicate your Sebastian Shaw, I've done that before, really powerful if that happens, or Surfer. And then there's some of the other newer cards that could go here, too. And then you can drop Odin on top of that, and then Gilgamesh will buff everybody up again. That's going to be so good. Gilgamesh seems super potential for top tier. And it's really interesting they're buffing the Surfer decks. Because those were, like, tournament winning before. But it looks like destroying Discard, especially Hela herself, is back to being number one from what I saw in the High Gold League and Infinity League of Conquest. So the game circled back to what it was before. Here's Cersei. Okay, this art is not, like, the actress, I think, just absolutely... Absolutely defeats this art. But this art is still super cool. I really like it. On reveal, transform... Does it say the date of release? No, that'll be at the end. Or middle of this. On reveal, transform your other cards here into random cards that cost one more, if able. Another on reveal character. You could play it with Wong to do a double transformation. I doubt you want to do that. But you could. And... Also, this is just this game download, in case you guys are wondering what that is all about. Let me just make sure you guys can still see this. You cannot see what I'm seeing. There we go, that's why I was checking it. I was just talking about that. That's that's that called downloading. The new version of the Star Wars fighting game. Which I'm about to show off. Possibly before this video. We'll just see how everything uploads and finishes. Well, yeah, I, I think it will be after this video. I think it's going to be after this video because... Uh, most people are going to know this is around and whatnot. Also, I'll have my patch notes video too, so there'll be two that'll be around. So it'll probably be after the patch notes video, actually. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me here. Here's Cersei. On reveal, transform your other cards here into random cards that cost one more. Absolutely, absolutely incredible card. Also a card that I could throw into pretty much any deck like Legion. And just have fun. Now, here's the thing. Wait, wait, wait. Here's the thing. How would you pull this off? This is just me being a former pro card game player and Infinity player in this game. Not Infinity Champion. There's a big difference. Infinity Champion is someone who's actually cleared it. Um, I've just entered Infinity before. Although I don't buy Infinity tickets within the shop to increase my odds of actually performing better in it, but that I don't bother to. If the mutants were stronger, I'd care, but yeah, they're just not super strong. But you'll generally see one or two in each deck. Generally. Anyway. I'm trying to figure out, can you ever get Kang the Conqueror to change her powers? To try to get better cards? He's six cost, King the Conqueror. I'm gonna think on that. For... Cause I have King the Conqueror. He was like one of the best cards in the game, played with Thanos. He could gain you extra mana, like the guy's actually supposed to do to gain freaking Um like Lego Marvels 2. To gain advantage over the world. Which Lego sounds like absurd dimension, but yeah, it's, it's actually some of the best storytelling. Uh which is just really freaking sad. Like, it outdoes the movies sometimes. Definitely Lego Marvel. Uh, Marvel's 1 was just really freaking well done. Uh, Lego Marvel's 2, though, has King the Conqueror, which is so mind-boggling. Like, I don't know what they were thinking to have him in it, but he's in it. Like, like I've watched um, a father and son review that game. Uh, oh, wait, Asian Guy Gamer is his name. I got approval to mention his name. Uh, the 8-Bit Theater is what he goes by on YouTube. Absolute legend of legends. Um, but yeah, him and his son were playing that game and 
it was rough for them to understand. And his son was like, not even that young at the time. And like, it was just too much of a plot. Although I've seen tons of Star Trek, so time travel and all that stuff is just not a super huge part of it, but it is a huge part of some of the films. Actually, at least two films. But yeah, anyway, let's keep going here. But yeah, I just really want to use King the Conqueror. Let me know, are there any known King the Conqueror decks? Because And shout out to you guys for answering some of these questions, too. That's why I'm asking, because yeah. Is there a, like, really top-tier King the Conqueror deck? Because, like, every time I use King the Conqueror, it just shows my strategy, and they just play better the next turn and defeat me. Or they're still stronger than me, so it didn't matter, me playing King the Conqueror, because he seems to gain me no advantage at all. Like, maybe if he has played the same turn as Pixie, but it's just so hard to have enough mana to play multiple cards the same time King the Conqueror is played. But I'm thinking that's the only way to remotely get value out of him. Because I would have been so better off with Thanos. But I'm pretty sure I randomly got King the Conqueror. So, it just was what it was. What is this? Faustus? Hopefully I'm saying these names right. That looks like Stormbreaker. Interesting. On reveal, give each of your each card in your deck minus one cost or plus two power. Now here's exactly what I was talking about. If you have plus three extra mana, could you play him and Kang and try to rig the match of your next card draw to play out better? I just don't think it works. I don't think you'd see the card. I still don't know how anyone could have enough mana to pull this stuff off. But maybe if, if Kang is... Wait, Kang could be made free. Wait now, Kang could be made free with... Inverted Man. Mr. Negative. You could make Kang free. Oh my goodness, I may need to try that with Pixie. At some point. Mr. Negative into Pixie. Oh my goodness, here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Just in case you're newer to the game, you don't know what exactly what I'm going on about. You're thinking of maybe joining the game. It's always a decent time to join the game, especially if you love these characters, absolutely. It might be a little hard to get the first few characters, but the characters near the end of the month, you can absolutely get. So this is like a personal quest to try to use this card. Oh, he's only- wait, King's only 5 mana. Wait, that changes some things. Look at what your opponent did, then restart the turn without this. There is a way. There is a way to actually use him. If you can fill the zone super quickly to get the extra mana, you could try to better rig the deck with random with all these new random cards. There is a way, actually. So yeah, King with these cards might be a play. It's not going to be consistent, though. I couldn't, can't imagine it ever being consistent and actually top tier. But you could theoretically, for ideal best turn and best zone spawning, that might be the strongest play with some of these. To try to make sure certain cards are really good. Also, I don't have her, but there's also cards that spawn in other cards cheaper at stronger, and you could try to get a better card with that using King too. Same turn as her. To just see if you get anything better. And here he is, the dude that will change the game forever, Arishim. Now, it might be that he's slow, that he- oh, I forgot, he gives- uh, that's why this works. He gives plus one mana, plus one energy. So you're getting random stuff for better, and this could just be incredible. But yeah, the, he's the main guy that made me think of Kang, though. But yeah, he affects the start of the game, so I don't think Kang can affect him. Oh, so the server is so slow with the download. Oh my word. That's why I'm just gonna play this game before, um, play this, this stuff before that one. But it's gonna be tons of fun. But yeah, look forward to that. If you really like Star Wars and fan games, just, it, it, just if you like coding in general, it's gonna be a really cool look. June 4th is blank, Series 5 release. Wah, wah, wah. So I need to come back every 8 hours, li literally, this is so toxic. Every 8 hours to check to see if Blink is in the store, because I want to unlock Blink ASAP for you guys and show what she can do. Because Blink also theoretically can be played with Kang the Conqueror, like I'm talking about. 
to get a better card to come down and get some abilities. To try to rig... Uh, well, I don't know if rig is the right word, but it just feels like it's the right word because he's trying to rig time to his favor, King the Conqueror. But yeah, you're trying to advent advantage the game. I'm just going to say advantage because there's no actual like cheating or anything. It's part of the game mechanics. But yeah, you're trying to advantage yourself more than just natural draw the cards would do. Which he used to do. It was clearly overpowered. They had to change Kang. Like, I have incredible footage of just the best Marvel Snap deck of the era. And it's unbelievable what the guy can do. Because he, I believe he rigs the game into dropping, into getting another She-Hulk. So he literally drops Infinaut and two She-Hulks. And I can still enter Conquest mode with just the one Infinaut and one She-Hulk. It was just incredible. Because he could do a chain with Moon Girl that would just be so unbelievably powerful. But yeah, it, it disappeared overnight, though, once they fixed the Kang gaining power with Thanos. Because Thanos is also in that deck. Because, like, it lets you draw the stones easier. Which the stones have, of course, been nerfed as well. And maybe more so. But yeah, new Series 4 and Series 5 cars appear in the Spotlight Catch and Token Shop. As you level up your collection, Spotlight Catches become available for you to unlock a Series 4, Series 5, Spotlight Variants, and more. Here's Athena, dude. I really want this Athena card, but I gotta save it for Mutant Kind. You guys know me. Speaking of Mutant Kind, here's Phoenix Force. Oh my goodness, there's a new incredible Phoenix Force art. Oh, that's tempting. But no, I, I want to save it for New Mutants. I already have base Phoenix Force. Incredibly difficult card to play. Although I saw an awesome destroying of multiple man to play it into Phoenix Force, which you could also play... Um, Jugger, no, it's freaking Hulkbuster on him and then play Phoenix Force on top of that, which he didn't do that because he didn't want to be saying cheat. He only wanted the, the eight power, and it, but it was a really, really great deck. Tons of fun to play. Hopefully I'll be able to upload that soon. Oh my goodness, it's X-23. It looks even better on this page. Oh my goodness, that's probably my favorite X-23 in the game. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with her, with her character-wise. Looks like she has, like, Jean Grey powers or something. Or Psylocke powers. That is an extra mutation, it looks like. On this X-23, I may need to research that. But this might be my favorite X-23 look. Oh wait, this is familiar to me, actually. She has, like, the leoparding print as it goes down. I really like character design. Also, I've seen the uh, k drama Fashion King. I just can never not see fashion as art anymore. I didn't care at all before that, and now I just can't see it. <laughs> it's got my favorite actress of all time, and basically best thing ever on Earth, Kwan Yuri. <laughs> it's a little deep dive lore. Makari? Oh, this is Makari. Wait. What does Makari do? Oh, oh my goodness, did I skip Makari like an absolute noob? After the turn, runs from your hand to a random location if possible. This is best seen... If you haven't seen the, um, new season one already. Yeah, she's free. She's a free 3-3. So you could play Quicksilver. This is an awesome addition to the game, although very dangerous because these are strong cards. She's a 3-3, so she would work in your surfer in a surfer deck. Masterfully work in a surfer deck. She may be a new must-play for a surfer deck, but this, this whole event basically buffs surfer decks, which are some of my most favorite to play. And very overpowered, though can be. They seem ferritized, because Hella's even more overpowered. A big card discard Hella deck. Some Hella decks are fair, like my one. My one with the mutants is fair. But yeah, those are the ones that are just totally unfair. Well, I can't say entirely fair. Hella's, Hella's unfair just in general. She's a 6 cost that can output like 20 plus cost worth of power. So that's like 50 over 50 power. She can consistently output. That's what I was seeing. That's why winning was so hard last season, but... Especially when the big, big time showed up for the final week. Woo! That was epic. Dang, I, I want this X-23 so bad. This may be a YOLO pull, but then I'd be missing out on another mutant in the future. And I'm down mutants. As is, I know there are other mutants I don't have with this last season. I don't know if I can do it. I think they're mutants anyway. Sasquatch, I... Sasquatch is a mutate, I think. But I want to, want to say there's one other actual... Oh, Namora! Yeah, no, I need to save my points for Namora. I don't have Namora. She's an actual X-Gene. 
Anyway, sorry if I'm dragging this. Well, I'm not trying to drag the video out, but it's just so, so epic. And then Herc- oh my god, super cool Hercules! Black Swan! And Arashim. These two cards are rare. I don't know if these cards have much value, but the Arshim himself... Also, I do want this card, though. Especially this art is just incredible. It's one of the base art I actually like more than the custom art, but the face work here is really great. Well, I don't know if work is the right word for that, but it feels like that. Well, it can feel like that when you're drawing. It shouldn't, though. It should be always fun, but work is work, generally. And this is just an incredible picture, of course. Like, you Sure, um, looks like one of the funnest cards in the game. He's he's he's, he's either going to be completely amazing of a character because I'm so curious to play a Sherm with Pixie. Just give me random cards, give me an extra mana, make everybody cheaper or, or more expensive, and just let the pandemonium unlock. World Forge, replace one of the other locations each turn. Eternal's Ark. After turn five, flood other locate flood the other locations. So this is probably going to be Storm's flood power. Does Storm show that? She does flooding. This is the last turn cards can be played here. You, you guys can see that, right? Yeah, yeah, you can. You actually see this pop up here, which I do apologize for. Apparently, the killer clowns from outer space came out. Okay. I can't believe that got a game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not spending money for that, though. That movie is barely watchable, oh my goodness. From what I recall, I could be wrong, though. Maybe it's better than I recall, but I remember it being rough. Kinda good, though. It had its moments. Oh, here it is! Yes! The King Scotty Young Avatar. 2,000 collector's tokens. King Scotty Young variant. Tony Stark eye roll emote. Absolutely incredible. I bet people are gonna love, love, love that emote. And then here's the other one, Thanos Peach Momoko Avatar. I got my peaches out in Irvine. Oh yeah, snap. New Peach Momoko album coming June 17th. Peach Momoko is one of my all-time favorite. Absolute all-time favorite artists. Quite possibly my favorite female artist, period. Um, collect six 2,000 credits. Collect nine... Enchantress Heart Eye Emote. Collect 12 Thanos Peach Momoko Variant. Thanos Peach Momoko Variant. That'll be, be interesting to see how that actually plays out. That implies that it's 12 different Thanos variants. I don't think that's going to be true, but... What in the apocalypse? There's going to be a new... Is this a collection as well? Yeah! Oh no, this is just saying when you have 12 of these, this is what you get. So yeah, at the very end you'll get this Thanos. That's what this is actually saying. You get Apocalypse Steampunk Avatar. This is just kind of meh. It's cool though. There's so many cool Apocalypses. This is a little less cool. But this Thanos is... Well, I mean, there's a ton of cool Thanos. But this is just, I think, more uniquely cool. Uh, Steam card, Steampunk card back, collect 12 Moon Girl emotes. Shop takeovers, here we go. Ooh, looks like a Peach Momoko. On June 17th, for one day only, Peach Momoko will be taking over the shop with eight, yes, eight, brand new variants, including Blade, Enchantress, Ghost Rider, Magneto, Moon Girl, Sabretooth, Moon Knight, and the incredible Spider-Man! Ooh, Spider-Man's not even shown here. Ooh, that could be real interesting. A Peach Momoko Spider-Man. This blade is super cool. This surfer is incredible. Here we go. The new Twitch drops are, of course, these. Of course, these are the new Twitch drops. Oh, of course, don't these two marry? I think they do. Well, well while I'm talking about this, um, Mystique and Destiny also just got married in the comics. Yeah, take that for what it is. <laughs> it's a sign of the times, I'm just gonna say that. 
Uh, I don't know if I uh, see Mystique as that type character. She's given birth to uh, people before, but okay. I mean, they can story tell how they want to story tell. I do think they should have the freedom to story tell as long as it's in a peaceful manner in any way they want. But yeah, I will be picking these up, though, absolutely, because why not? It's just free stuff. Like, even if you don't agree with this style of thing, it's just free stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna be more like... an a Jesus-type mentality, or do my utmost to be. And, because yeah, Jesus hung out with all types of people, literally, it's said in it. And he didn't persecute a single one. Because he was there to save them. Anyway, that's how I'm gonna see it. I do apologize, I don't know how much I can actually talk about that on this platform, but say that and no offense to anyone anyone i wish everyone the best because that's also as an american someone's duty to respect the freedoms that they've been given and that's that's one of the hugest ones actually that they're given over other countries although other countries are joining in on that and uh that has been my hopefully an offensive way of talking about that because it needs to be mentioned june is the month of their celebration although it's also many other things as well i'm pretty sure but let's just go. This is what they want to portray, so that's what I'm going to focus on. Do not try to diminish this at all by mentioning something else. Let's keep going. I'll watch two hours, earn 65 random boosters. Although, although is this an outrageous display? I will possibly say yes, but you can say the same thing about... Uh, uh, I, I think you could say the same thing about uh, Independence Day, where everyone just is holding US flags, so it is what it is. Is this agenda? Most likely. That's also fair enough to say on the counterpoint, but anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that. But this is the theme of modern era. Is to, to do this. Like, they'd probably get mad at them if they didn't do this. That's the catch-22. And it's worth noting because Suicide Squad just got in trouble for trying to do this stuff too, so it's a danger in a game to do it. That's also worth mentioning. But they'll probably be just fine. It's Marvel, and these two characters, I think, also marry, or and or they're just... Well, when I last looked it up, I have a video on it, but yeah, they're together. I'm pretty sure Angela and Sata. And it's really great. It's really great art, although I wish Angela had a little more clothes on her, like Sarah, but... That is that is what it is, and although, like, her epicness cannot be denied. Either of these two characters. I wish I had a really good Sarah deck, but I still don't have little, um... Angela's just- I actually have an Angela deck, so you will, you'll probably be seeing this art at some point. A Sarah deck I don't really have a great one for. I had it at one point, but I'm missing... Oh, what's his name? Sabertooth Tiger Guy. Oh my goodness, I can't remember his name. Sabertooth Tiger Guy. But yeah, that dude who makes the cards cheaper. Who got nerfed. Oh, a while ago. But yeah, you need a double cheapening. Plus, Pixie could be just incredible. I want to try that at some point. Watch six hours to earn Angela. Oh, this is a... Watch six hours to earn Sarah. Watch two hours, four hours. You get a double reward at six hours? That's incredible. Two cards given away at once? This is an awesome event. Absolutely incredible event. Because, yeah, just do it for this stuff at least, even if you don't even use these characters. But also, kind of why not have them? That's how I see it anyway. Also, I, I'm like, the, the artist in me does not like having default art, art of anything. I like customization, which is deeply part of me. So yeah, I have default of both these cards. I, no, actually, I do have a special Dara, Sarah. Don't I have the 1602 Sarah? Also, I'm sure, Zabu. That's the name of the Sabertooth Tiger, Zabu. I know it will come to me. I just have, like, almost, I have very limited sleep. Not like I mentioned before, but it is what it is. Was celebration time for Mighty Sista. So cool, cool, cool. I actually want the cool, cool, cool title. That's also why I mentioned that because I mentioned Sister on the channel before. Because that title might maybe reference them, probably not. It's probably something else, but you never know. Uh, and my Angela deck is this, right? No, I changed it. No, it's this. This is my Angela deck. See, default. Default Angela. Which is, this is incredible art. This is fair enough. You just want to rock that. But yeah, I don't have Sarah. I don't think Sarah's in any deck. 
But yeah, I have this 1602, which I really want the 1602 Rogue. I don't think it's in this game yet, though. I want Extreme Rogue the most. Also, I wasn't having the new music play. I apologize for that. I think that just about does it, though, for this video. Thanks so much for watching. It was probably absurdly long. Yeah. It's absurdly long, but you know what? It just is what it is. Because I want to actually bring something unique to the table rather than just other people that cover all the same stuff. And yeah, you got this. This will give you... This will show the cards in play, actually. All the new cards, if I recall. Definitely... Oh, what's her name? I can't memorize these names. Makari. Makari here. I really think she'd be really cool with her and M'Baku. Well, that might start giving you some actual really good power. The problem is if M'Baku's in your hand, he doesn't summon. She does. We'll see if they change M'Baku to match her. I kind of feel like they should. I've seen M'Baku one time, I think. One or two times. Besides me bringing him. Actually, I don't even know if I can bring him anymore. I think I had to take him out of that deck. Speaking of which, he could be in my one-cost deck, too. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. The best card, I think, is going to be Gilgamesh out of this. Besides maybe a Serum. I'm the most hyped for a Serum, though. To see how he plays and works. But for raw power of my actual account, it's either going to be him if he actually ends up being really good. Or, or... Gilgamesh to power up my Surfer deck, because that could bring it to an insanely high next level that, it, that at least my personal one needs. Maybe you guys have a workaround using um, Blue Marvel, but Blue Marvel isn't ideal because he can't play into Wong. So this makes him way better. Gilgamesh is a very much welcomed addition, especially how destroyed I was by discard decks or a variant of them using Hela. Somebody had like a double variant of a deck. I don't even recall its level of devastation was just so huge because it had this it was a of course um invisible woman and dude i just have to leave this freaking next winter up just so what so, so freaking epic i really might have to yell over that one but don't wait i already have a custom x23 though oh i already have a custom x23 no i don't think i will even though that is my ideal look for it, probably for one of them but I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Leoparding, I wish it wasn't there, whatever that is. Um, but anyway, yeah, I have an awesome X23, with the, with the Avatar picture. Like, sub, subscribe, this is, I wonder if this is her Hellfire Gala look. It really might be. Is that why that's familiar to me? It might be, why that is. Anywho, I should send the video, thanks for watching. Like, sub, sub, subscribe, do all that goodness. And see you next time, everybody. Check the description at the very bottom, best way to help out the channel. And you're an unbelievable absolute legend for watching the video this long. See you next time. Stay marvelous. Stay mutant strong and welcome to the Eternals. Let me know if you guys are going to play this as well. Or take, take a bit of a break. Like I probably will. But I will be trying to get Blink ASAP. And show some Blink gameplay off for you guys. Because Blink into Jubilee is a legit thing. And I might be able to do some really bizarre King play with her too. To try to get her to summon something better if it failed once. Although I don't know how I would do that. Because it would have to be played the same turn. So I'd have to assume she's summoning something bad. So it could make it be worse. But I still really want to see it happen. Just to see any amount of any amount of usefulness out of King. To make another goofy deck for you guys to see. Anyway, see you next time. Later. And to just get a win with Kang. It's just so difficult to stay in age. Didn't fuck her. Anyway. See you next time. Stay marvelous. Stay meet and strong. Stay eternal. Ah. Seek your eternal glory.